The Shane, in the last 24 months, how's your decision making process changed? There's no doubt the decision making process and trying to understand the increased cost in construction and therefore the risk is important. We're spending more money up front than we otherwise would because we're having to mitigate more risks around understanding the supply chain issues and those inflationary pressures to make sure that we have accurate cash flows and before we go to investment committee and make those major decisions. But we have gates and we're spending more money in those early gates to mitigate the risk, compartmentalize it before we move on to the next spend of understanding the project. So there's probably a little bit more spend up front to understand and mitigate those risks. Invest early, de-risk the project, and better outcomes in the end. Absolutely, and working very closely with your builder on an ECI, early contractor engagement, making sure that you're adding value for both you, the builder, and the client, so that it's a more efficient process. And I think working very, very transparently and closely with the builder can add enormous value to the project for the end user. And we see that too in the commercial space. That ECI process is certainly the engagement of choice for a lot of our clients in that, as we said, it, it de-risks the project mm. early days. You get buy-in from the contractor so that when it comes time to tender and deliver the project that they're already invested and it's not a long procured process. Yeah, there's no doubt at the moment understanding the process of how you're engaging with the builder is important, but the tenant is demanding that as well because they want to know that the project is de-risked to be delivered on time and on budget. So um, yeah, we're, we're getting pushback from the tenant and we're getting the builder coming to the party to really help mitigate risk. So Shane, for your projects, are you engaging with the same builders and the same consultant team on each project? Absolutely, we're always looking to do that. We've got a business that wraps around with an ecosystem of best of breed partners and we choose to work with those partners around the country and engage with a lead partner in the business. And that lead partner then has to disseminate through that business how we wanna do things, how we go about interacting with our client, the end user, and drive efficiency right through their business. And by having that relationship, you get so much efficiency and you capture the continuous improvement that can be laid back into the next project and the next project that it becomes super efficient in terms of delivery. And the competitive tension is always there because if they're not performing, you can move to another ecosystem partner. But we view life as a long road and while they're performing and being very efficient and cost competitive, that's our model and it's very effective in the current market. Yeah, it's, it's been a really challenging last 24 months for us and our clients. The pandemic kicking in, the supply chain increases have been enormous. Shipping costs have increased by 300%. The material prices have increased significantly. The challenge we're seeing at the moment is a skilled labour shortage. Our subcontractor market are really struggling to maintain the work that we're currently delivering, balancing that with cash flow and getting that skilled labour in to deliver the project. So it's certainly quite challenging for our teams at the moment. Are you seeing an increase in requirement for ESG with your tenants? I think if people aren't aware of ESG, environmental, social and governance, and being authentic to it and transparent in terms of how they're going to deliver it, they're not going to win the race to those government tenants and they're not going to build buildings that are really going to set the standard for the next wave of what people demand. We are absolutely working with our builders, our consultants and our financiers around how we wrap that all into a project. But there's so much depth there, I really do implore any of your clients to go and speak to you guys or whoever and get your head around it because if you're not in that game, you're going to be out of the game, I believe, of property and delivering office and industrial. What's your outlook on the construction sector in regards to construction costs moving forward? It's something we've absolutely got to be aware of and build into our cash flows. And I think over the next uh, period of time, I think inflation will stabilise to a certain point in terms of some of those materials. I think there's wage pressure, but I think if we are very clear and understand those risks and wrap mitigated conservative assumptions around them, we can still move forward. But there will be a point where we're going to have to pass these costs on or there's going to be a stalemate. I'm not convinced whether the tenants can afford to pay that premium. If they can, great. If not, there might be a little bit of a stalemate early next year in terms of projects getting out of the ground because tenants won't commit to that increased cost base. But something we all need to be acutely aware of and I'm sure you're working with your clients mm -hmm. to uh, make them clearly aware of it and we're building it into our cash flows.